Did you know that the Ark of the Covenant is our secret spiritual weapon to emancipate ourselves from Babylonian captivity? Surely you recognize by now that we live in Babylon. We have our food, water, air, and minds being poisoned by a group of parasitic bankers which are completely destroying everything that's sacred. Well, the Ark of the Covenant is our Creator's secret weapon for us to beat the banksters. It's been used throughout history, and as they say, history repeats. So, Ark means a container, and Covenant means law. So, the Ark of the Covenant is just the container of law. Well, you know what else is a container of law? Your cerebellum, your skull, is a container of law. So the Ark of the Covenant isn't anything we need to go dig up from a dusty cave. The Ark of the Covenant is simply our enlightened consciousness, and that consciousness is that we follow the law of nature. The laws of nature cannot be violated without consequence. No matter how powerful a politician, talking head, general, or whatever there may be, they cannot violate the law of gravity without consequence. Now, man keeps trying to rewrite the laws of nature and play God. So, man is rewriting the laws of nature with respect to our economic laws. And because of that, we are suffering the consequences, and those consequences are war, a, per a perpetual police state, perpetual debt, we have poison food, water, air, and mines. Everything is being warred upon. To fix that, we just need to listen to the sacred economic law of the prophets. And when you get a chance, listen to my podcast, which is the Usury Free Jubilee Podcast. And it's a monetary reform podcast focused on the message of the prophets. And by listening to this, in less than a year, we can emancipate ourselves. So this is exactly how we do it. And this is exactly how we go from wandering in the wilderness, from living in Babylon, to crossing over into the promised land. Okay, so why should you listen to me? My name is Wayne Walton, and I'm a full-time monetary reform activist. I'm a warrior philosopher who actually implements real-world monetary reform systems that are based on barter. I want you to issue your own money, too. Based upon your own unique gifts, artistry, and passion, all of us can issue our own money the exact same way that a restaurant owner issues a gift certificate. And this is our path to emancipation from the bankers. We have to take responsibility and issue money ourselves. So, I'm not just talking about this, we're actually implementing this in the real world. And just like Joshua led his tribe across the Jordan to the Promised Land, it's our obligation to do the exact same thing in our own tribes. And we don't need a majority in order to achieve this beautiful victory of emancipation. Please hear me, brother and sister warrior. Since the bankers rule us with a tiny minority, we can emancipate our tribes with a tiny minority as well. I'll explain how we create a bottom-up monetary revolution that has common units so that we can issue currency locally but spend the currency globally. I'll explain how we create a monetary reform revolution from the bottom-up without waiting, without a vote, without a majority, and we uproot the base evil which is enslaving humanity today. In order to do that, I have to articulate what is the problem and what's the solution. All right, brother and sister warrior, here we are in Babylonian captivity. We are living as debt slaves on the plantation and we want to find a way to escape. We wish to emancipate ourselves and it's essential, first of all, to understand that we are being warred upon. This isn't simply, you know, government ineptitude or corporate greed or profit. We are being warred upon and we have to treat it as such. And since we're being warred upon, it's insufficient for us to wait for a vote for politicians when we are actually being killed. Our brothers and sisters are being killed. There's loss of hope everywhere. There's despair, there's fear, there's hopelessness. And we have to lead by example. We have to step up 
And rather than allowing the bankers just to rule over us, we have to replace this bank colony with an art colony, and that's the goal. So here's a very important thing to remember. The bankers don't protest. The bankers don't vote. The bankers don't petition their representatives. The bankers issue money, and then they hire everybody to do those things for them. Well, the bankers' money is uh, energized by us, meaning the bankers' money wouldn't have any value if it wasn't for us. Only because we use their money does their money have any value. So if we were all to barter, the bankers' money would be completely valueless. So that is the path to emancipation, is for us to develop our own alternative system. So not to fight what they have, but to uh, replace it and make it obsolete. So, um, you know, here we are in Babylon, and we're seeing these things that are very visceral. Um, and that's the thing, is our, uh, the bankers use our emotions against us. So we see on TV and in and, and real life that there's these drones. The police are becoming militarized. The police are killing dogs. They're killing and beating human beings in the street. They're beating up our brothers and sisters without consequence. Because they're, you know, we have to realize that the, the military and police are simply mercenaries for the banksters, just like all of us. We have all sold our soul in one way or another to earn the bankers' monopoly money. So this isn't a, a blame revolution. This is a love revolution where we all take responsibility and uh, choose to empower ourselves. So we're not looking to blame any particular group. We're just uh, identifying uh, where we are right now because we have to establish where we are right now and then where we want to go. And what we will do to sacrifice to get there. So we have the police state, we have perpetual war, perpetual debt, perpetual scarcity. We have entertainers and athletes and uh, talking heads who all live in abundance because they serve the, the bread and circuses theater that keeps us distracted from our slavery. The bankers have trained us to covet things that destroy us and resist things that uh, will emancipate us. Uh, it's a form of Stockholm Syndrome. So that's why we're, you know, Federal Reserve notes, uh, it's, it's a dangerous addiction. It's, it's not just dangerous, it's a terminal addiction. Our addiction to Mammon's Monopoly money is a terminal addiction. So in one way, we covet this thing that's absolutely destroying. So it's destroying us, but in the meantime, we need it to live. Just like an alcoholic, they believe they need alcohol in order to survive, and they get set up uh, where they're perpetually coveting the very thing that's destroying us. So I say that monopoly money is a, a you know cure a, a, a disease masquerading as its own cure because even once you get it, you're still not fulfilled, and um, so we have to move past this where we uh, are coveting Federal Reserve notes and build a new system that serves us. So the reason why we're trapped in Babylon is that we're not listening to the prophets. We're listening to false prophets and Mammon or the money monopoly hires false prophets or basically they're millionaires hired by billionaires or trillionaires in order to keep us in Babylon. And when you're in Babylon, right, what happens is we're babbling on, we're babbling on and on and on about being in Babylon. We're complaining about the drones. And what happens is when a truth teller, you know, a false prophet, when a false prophet tells us about the militarized police, we go, oh, he's an honest guy. Or like... So, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Snowden, for instance. Jonathan Snowden is just telling us that we have a militarized police. He's telling us that we're being monitored by the NSA. But he's not teaching us to cross over the, the Jordan to the Promised Land. And basically what happens is 
the bankers finance their own revolutions, and the way they have their own revolutions is they finance pro false prophets in order to keep us trapped in Babylon. And those false prophets earn our allegiance because they tell us some minor, dirty little secret. But what remains when we have uh, someone who tells us, you know, say 95% the truth, that 5% lies, those 5% lies still poison us. When we listen to the prophets, the genuine prophets, they will tell us how to cross the Jordan into the promised land. So don't listen to me, listen to the prophets. And that is the goal. So the, the journey is from Babylon to the promised land. Now, our goal, we have to focus not on all of our problems, what you think of grows. So if you focus on your problems, you remain trapped in Babylon. But if you focus on your emancipation and what emancipation looks like, then you focus on that, and then that allows you to focus on your journey and not on your problems. We should enjoy the journey because it's a jubilee. It really is, and there's no reason to be in fear. There's no reason to be in despair, but, but recognize that this is a war, and there's people who are truthers, uh, such as Michael Rufer, Rupert, who recently killed himself. He was completely aware of all of these aspects of Babylon, but he lost hope because he didn't think there was any way to cross over to the Promised Land. With God, all things are possible. Another way to put that is, within any problem lies a grand opportunity, and our grand opportunity is to cross over the Promised Land. And in the promised land, you know, what's in, what's in the promised land? What's there that you would want? Well, what I think everybody wants is peace of mind. Those on the left want peace of mind that they'll have abundance for social programs and civil programs will have jobs in abundance. Those on the right want to have peace of mind that they're not being stolen from. And basically that's the non-aggression principle. Well, with usury-free money, both the left and the right can get what they want. That's why this is so ingenious, and that's why we need to listen to the prophets and not the false prophets. The false prophets are hired to keep you on the plantation. We need to cross over, and that is our mission. And this is a military mission, to stop listening to the false prophets. Now, in order to cross over from Babylon to the Promised Land, we must know the root cause evil. Because if we just remove symptoms, we'll never get to, you know, where we need to go. And that is the kingdom of heaven on earth. Like, we could truly have heaven on earth. So, for every thousand hacking at the branches of evil, there is one who strikes the root. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Moses, and Joshua all struck the root of evil. So, we're going to describe you know, why that is. Not just say, believe us, just believe the prophets for no reason. I want to explain why specifically uh, uh, money monopoly or usury is the root of all evil. So, um, you know, when you turn on the TV, obviously you have millionaires hired by billionaires in order to get you to focus on the branches of evil. That's pretty obvious. They want to have us babbling on about symptoms where we never get to the root cause. They are hired in order to keep us on the plantation. So, you know, they want us talking about Monsanto. And I'm not saying that Monsanto is an evil. Like, don't get me wrong. It's the tree of evil. The tree of evil has many branches, but we want to get to the root. And Monsanto is roughly, you know, 50, 75 years old. Um, obviously, evil has been around, or the root of evil has been around much longer than that. So, we're going to kind of do these things uh, chronologically, because when you get to the root of evil, the root of evil has been around a very long time. You know, obviously, the uh, NSA, which uh, is second on here, that's been around for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, of the police state has been growing uh, across these years. Um... The problem is, is if we were to eliminate Monsanto tomorrow, right, 
and we all grew our own food, we all had our own organic food, we would still be debt slaves to the exact same bankers that we are debt slaves today. We would still have perpetual war. Now, although our, perhaps our food wouldn't be poisoned anymore, we would still have poisoned air, we would still have poisoned minds coming through an educational system and a, a you know, puppet uh, media, uh, corporate media. We would still have uh, uh, poisoned air. We'd, ha we'd still have all of these other symptoms which are, are poisoning us. So we want to get to the root cause. So uh, going down, you, you know, you talk to people that go to Occupy events and you go to people that are in Tea Party events they complain about different things, but some of them are in common. Um, but I'm here to tell you that neither Occupy Tea Party or the Ron Paul revolution, none of those revolutions got to the root cause. And until you get to the root cause, if you give everything that Occupy ever wanted, if you eliminate all corporations, if you eliminate... Uh, uh, corporate personhood, and, and you gave Occupy every single thing that they wanted, uh, a, a student jubilee, all of those things, the root of evil would still exist. If you gave the Ron Paul movement every single thing they wanted, the root of evil would still exist. That's why it's so essential to get to the genuine, authentic root of evil, uh, which is declared by the prophets, right? So, uh, going down, you know, we're facing another world war with the stuff going on in, uh, in uh, the Ukraine and Kiev. Uh, some people on the left would say capitalism is the root of all evil. Uh, some people would say socialism is the root of all evil. And by the way, did you know that the bankers financed capitalism, fascism, and socialism uh, all at the same time? During World War II, the same monopoly bankers financed capitalism, socialism, fascism all at the same time. In fact, the bankers invented all of those isms. So going down, uh, some people would say the Federal Reserve is the root of all evil. Uh, certain you're, you're getting closer because whenever there's a crime, right, the first step in solving genuinely a crime is to follow the money, right? And... You know, think of uh, when there's an assassination, right? If, uh, if President Kennedy is assassinated, you shouldn't just focus on who pulls the trigger. You should focus on who financed the assassination. Because when you finance, when you follow the money, then you know who really perpetrated the assassination or, or a war or, again, any crime. So uh, going down... Um, with re respect to the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve is a hundred years old, right? Well, Jesus was flipping tables 2,000 years ago, right? Jesus identified usury as the root of all evil. He was flipping t uh, tables 2,000 years ago uh, and, and basically calling uh, the bankers a den of thieves. Well, th these bankers then were using silver money. So... Those of us that were blaming the Federal Reserve, I, I made that mistake for a very long time, that it's the Federal Reserve or central banks. Well, that's not the root of all evil. Even if we never ever have another central bank, um, it's essential to realize there's a, a deeper issue, which is money monopoly. So uh, going down, uh, some people blame corporations or government. There's a huge anarchist movement going on right now. In fact, at the very core of both the Occupy and the Tea Party movements, when you bore all the way down, you will find anarchists and atheists on both factions. Isn't that interesting? On the very far left, Occupy, and the very far right, Tea Party, when you bore all the way down, you find anarchists and uh, uh, atheist anarchists in both factions. Um, you know, coming down here, we've got, we're getting closer to the root of evil, by the way. Um, you have slavery. Now, slavery, uh, we had a, a war over that uh, 150 years ago, right? Well, African-American slavery was ended, but obviously 
uh, there's another form of slavery which persists, and some people would say that's government. Um, anarchists would say that, that government is the root of all evil. So, you know, obviously government is very, very old. We're, we're chronologically going down. Well, let's roll back the clock 3,500 years ago, all right? That's, that's 3,000 years before the first central bank, right? Well, back then, they had debt forgiveness jubilees. Well, obviously, if you're having debt forgiveness jubilees as law, it's actually written in the Bible, and for a very long time, those were the only laws there were. Um, debt forgiveness jubilee was the law. Well, obviously, debt slaves were being created somehow. Well, how do you create debt slaves? Well, if you could issue money, you wouldn't have to borrow from somebody, right? Well, why do you ever have to borrow from somebody else if you can issue money? Well, it's because the money lenders monopolize money, and then we need to use their monopoly money in order to live, just like we do today. When we don't have money, we start borrowing just to live. I've been doing that quite a bit for the last couple years, unfortunately, is just to sustain life, not to live lavishly, just to exist. You have to keep borrowing just to even live. And it sets off a perpetual debt cycle because you have the exponentially uh, expanding growth of your debt and you create perpetual debt slavery. Well, this existed before the Bible before the Bible. And that's why uh, uh, the prophets, Moses, Muhammad, Jesus, Joshua, Buddha, all forbid usury, which just means, usury means more than interest. Usury means money monopoly. And they actually called the entity which monopolizes money, they called that mammon. Mammon and the money monopoly existed before governments were invented. In fact, if we eliminate all governments, all corporations, the Federal Reserve, NSA, TSA, Monsanto, NATO, capitalism, if we eliminate all of those things, if a small group of men control money, it allows them to control the reward system. So, you know, think of it, if you have a dog or a pet, you know, particularly a dog, I'm used to training dogs, um, you can train the obedience of dogs with simply rewards alone. You don't have to be violent with a dog. Well, if you think of government as the force and uh, uh, money, the money monopoly is the reward system, with rewards alone, you can train a dog to speak, to beg, right? Well, isn't that what they're doing with us? Um, so you could eliminate government but still the money monopoly exists. So I want to make sure that we're on the same page, that we have a unity consciousness or art consciousness, that we both identify the money monopoly as the root of all evil. So even if we agree that money monopoly is the root of all evil, the problem is, is the branches of evil are so visceral. They're very tangible. This money monopoly thing, we can't really touch it. We don't really see it. It's this invisible form of slavery where we're motivated to do these things that are destructive to ourselves. So, now, the opposite is true with the branches of evil. The branches of evil, um, they're very visceral. When we turn on the TV, the branches of, of evil are always there. When we drive down the road and, and there's a cop on our tail, the branches of evil are directly there. And because it's visceral, it's always on the top of our mind. That's why it's so difficult to, you know, we have to remove ourselves from society and go into nature and really think about these things. And it's, it's, it's telling to know that Henry David Thoreau, who's the creator of that quote, uh, for every thousand hacking at the branches of evil, there's one who strikes the root. He, he wrote that around 1830s, 1840s, 1850s. You know, that was during the slavery era. And he would have identified that slavery was the root of all evil. And if we got rid of slavery, the world would be great, you know. And that's the problem is that we, we, we must focus, focus 
just like the bankers did. They focused on controlling money, and once you control the monetary system, you can create all these other symptoms to distract the masses from the root cause. And that's how they keep us distracted, that we keep babbling on about all the symptoms. All these evil symptoms, it's definitely evil, right? What's going on? I agree it's evil, but we're babbling on about the symptoms. To escape from Babylon, we have to stop focusing on these symptoms and focus on the root cause. And then that brings us, you know, to the, the big question is belief in ourself. And the belief in ourself is that we have value, we have unique gifts, and that's contrary to all the things that our society has programmed is into us, is that when you turn on the TV, they're always trying to sell us something. In order to sell us something, they have to tell us why we're flawed. You know, I'm a short guy, right? So they, uh, uh, without even saying something, they're always showing tall dudes on TV, right? So they show us, is if you're not tall like Barack Obama or Bill Clinton or George Bush, you're not fit to lead, right? Um, so it's very subtle. Um, so the, the way they enslave our, enslave our minds is they always show our deficiencies. They always show how um, we're not up to the challenge and we're not valuable because we can't dunk a basketball, because we can't uh, uh, play professional football, because we're not as articulate as Barack Obama or Bill Clinton. Um, you know, because we can't do those things as well as these false idols on TV, every time we hear somebody that uh, gives us the truth, if they're not as articulate as the best people on TV or whatever, that makes us less than. So we always feel less than, and because we don't value ourselves, it doesn't give us the, the self-worth that we believe that, number one, we should be able to start our own uh, business based upon our own unique gifts, artistry, and passion. And then, even a step more than that, is then to issue our own money. And that is the next step to be emancipated. That's the way we genuinely emancipate ourselves, is not to use uh, Babylonian gold, silver, or Bitcoin. All of those are monopolized by the elite, right? So what always happens is the bankers keep replaying uh, old movies. Like, think of, uh, think of the different revolutions that we've had across the last years. You have the, you know, the communist revolution, you have the American revolution. And after each one of those wars, after all the, the blood, sweat, and tears, we're still using the same monopoly bankers' money, right? And that's why the bankers finance those revolutions, is to get us to fight, to, to, to basically capture our righteous indignation. Like, we're angry about these things that are going on, so we go into some loyal opposition movement. Um, so we support, let's say it's, uh, uh, we join the military after uh, uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Um, well, the war is fought, and before and after World War II, we're using the exact same money. And even before, like during the, when the Federal Reserve came along, before and after the Federal Reserve, we were using gold and silver money, right? Eventually it moved to paper. So what they want to do is create a Hegelian dialect. Well, they control gold, they control silver, they control Federal Reserve notes. They also control greenbacks, right? During Lincoln's era and during um, the tally stick era, the great the, the British Empire was created on tally sticks because it's centralized and monopolized by the elite. It didn't serve the wishes of the have-nots. So what we are doing here that's entirely different with the usury free jubilee is that we want you to issue the money. We want you to believe in yourself. And that is the revolution of the Ark of the Covenant, is that it's the recognition that we human beings are the value. Not gold, not the, uh, you know, the, the false idol, the golden calf, right? From the Bible, gold was the golden calf. When Jesus flipped tables, he was flipping silver shekels. 
They didn't, Jesus didn't value gold and silver over human beings. Jesus wouldn't value Bitcoin, a machine, a machine and bits over human beings. The prophets wouldn't, our creator wouldn't value gold, silver, and Bitcoin over his greatest creation, which is us, right? We're all, we're the ones that create all the, the music and art and, and amazing things. The problem is, is we don't believe in ourselves. An Ark of the Covenant consciousness is the recognition of the usury-free jubilee. That is the law. Usury-free money means that it's anti-monopoly money. That means the have-nots issue the money locally. So that is the foundational change in consciousness is that we human beings are the value. Okay, so why is this self-issued money thing so important? Well, money is like a circuit, like an electrical circuit. It's currency. So when, you, when we choose to use uh, mammon's monopoly money, we serve evil. It's really simple. When anybody creates a monopoly money system, they're doing that in order to create a monopoly to serve them in order to oppress their brothers and sisters. Alternatively, when you create anti-monopoly money, if you issue money and I love you and, and respect your gifts and artistry, and you do the same thing for me in a reciprocal relationship, we can then trade our own IOUs and allows us to set up a love currency, just like barter. If we create a completely independent barter system and we didn't use money at all, right? all of the Federal Reserve notes, gold, silver, and Bitcoin would have no value because we weren't using it because gold, silver, Bitcoin, Federal Reserve notes, greenbacks, the value of all those false idols is based upon us. So since the money's value is based upon us, that means we should issue it in the first place so that it, the, that way the technology of money serves our own interests. And money, like any technology, can be used for good or evil. And the, the way that we are absolutely certain that our commercial energy is going to be used for our own benefit and not for war, genocide, and a police state is for, for us to take responsibility. Our commercial energy is very, very important and it's very, very valuable. And here's a paradigm shift for you is that our most essential natural right is for us as sovereigns without subjects, sovereigns under the Creator, the Creator created us, is for us to issue our own money, just like a restaurant owner issues a gift certificate. And that's what we do with our money or mountain hours. So that is the, the next step. And, you know, what I'm asking you to do really is we are all superheroes, right? It's us. It's us. It's we believers that will be taking on the most powerful entity on planet Earth. Now, we can't take the bankers on in a physical revolution. So if we rely upon commodities of gold, silver, diamonds, petroleum, uh, uranium, they control all those monopoly forms of... Uh, control commodities. The, the, the elite control everything in the physical world, but in the spiritual world with our consciousness, right, where our heart is connected to our head, in the spiritual world, we love revolutionaries, truth seekers, jaw warriors, nonviolent jaw warriors. We truth seekers in this spiritual war where we fight with our minds and, and, and soul power, when we then issue our own currency and create a benevolent society that's alternative to Mammon's uh, Babylon, when we resist in the spiritual world, it's there that we have overwhelming superiority. That's why the Ark of the Covenant is so powerful, because when we hoist the Ark of the Covenant, the physical one, around, we create a conversation, right? People want to know, well, what's the Jubilee all about? Well, the Jubilee is when 
The have-nots issue their own money and decide that they are powerful and no longer pay the debts of Babylon. We, uh, we return land to the, the, the stolen land to the people. We uh, release captives. We make blind men see that they are powerful. And this is the hope which, is, which extinguishes the despair. And this is basically the, the purpose of my book, which is Operation Jericho, because consciousness doesn't take a long time to create, right? When we have these conversations directly with one another, there, there's not anybody on the left or right that I believe that I can reach. You know, if there are genuine truth seeker where they genuinely wish to emancipate their mind if they're ready to you know find the root of all evil i can pitch this new idea to everyone i can pitch this idea of going to the promised land because both the left and the right get what they want and that's what's so profound about the ark of the covenant or this this message for us to basically become these superheroes. Each one of us is a superhero. But unlike these retread stories that, you know, Hollywood has always given us these retread stories where Batman fights some, you know, think of the villains that they fight, right? Where is the story in all of Hollywood that you've ever heard growing up? They always have a military solution where it's about guns and physical resistance. It's about some guy with some superhero powers, like Neo, um, where he's fighting with superhero powers, um, but he's fighting, you, you know, a machine or something, right? Well, we're talking in the real world, where you and I live, where we use the power of the Creator that we are given because we are born in our Creator's image. We have these powers of creativity within us. A machine doesn't have that. A computer doesn't have that. This spirit of, of willingness to die for what we believe in, that, when, when it's directed against the true evil, the root cause evil, what it all comes down to is, what is it that we're really fighting? What is the true evil, the true bottom root cause evil? Well, like I said before, all of Mammon's power, the, the, their money system is based upon our energy, right? They're, they live parasitically off of us. Like Rockefeller and Rothschild, they don't produce all the value in the world, right? They just monopolize the money, which allows them to own our commercial energy in a slave system. It allows them to parasitically extract our energy and then use it to war against us. So our ability to escape their war upon us is only permitted. There's only one path to this. This isn't a solution. This is the solution. That means if we choose to make this revolution happen this year or wait a hundred years, that blood will be on our hands by waiting. So this is the path. When you live in a bank colony, emancipation comes through monetary reform. It doesn't come through monetary reform of a different type of currency controlled by the exact same bankers. It comes from a monetary reform completely independent of those bankers. And that means that you and I need to issue that money. The problem comes then is if, you know, all of us issue our own IOUs across the planet, we'll have all these different IOUs and that's very uh, confusing. There'll be various types of uh, uh, currency exchanges. Well, the way we uh, allow for local control is if we all have a common fixed unit value that we issue. And that's why ours is the fixed unit value. It's fixed in time where there's no inflation, no deflation. And I get into all that in my book, which is Operation Jericho. 
It's a non-violent military campaign in order to emancipate debt slaves through Jubilee monetary reform in less than a year. And this isn't just talk. This is a campaign that you can watch me perform, that you can watch me implement in order to emancipate my own tribe here in the kingdom of Breckenridge, here in Summit County, Summit Consciousness, Colorado, where we will create the kingdom dream right here. Well, we, just like I'm asking you to do, because I can't emancipate your tribe, I'm not looking to be your leader. I'm hoping for you to take power, to have our consciousness, for the spark to go off in your mind that it's yours and my responsibility to emancipate our own tribes. And here's an important uh, concept for us to think of. Um, on planet Earth, we are all crew members. Planet Earth is a spaceship moving, I, I don't know, 50,000 miles an hour through space. We don't even know it. We've been put into these walled cities and forgot how amazing creation is. Well, we are all crew members. There's nobody on this planet who, who God gave superiority to over you. No one was created to reign over you. We are all created as sovereigns without subjects. I'm a sovereign, but I have no subjects. All I can do is seek to reach out with my brothers and sisters and inspire them to move in a direction that serves them and serves me as well, because the more people who are living in, within their own greatest and highest gifts that are serving their own unique uh, capacity, um, the more people that are self-actualizing and emancipated from Babylon, the more safe my community will be. So I do have self-interest, um, but the, 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 the purpose of this is for all of us to recognize that we have a responsibility as crew members on planet Earth, that we can't just sit aside and allow our people to be poisoned and destroyed and live in despair, to allow military members to die at... They're, they're committing suicide at a rate of one per hour. One beautiful human being per hour that joined the military in order to serve others. They joined in order to serve others, and now they're killing themselves at that rate because they've, they've woken up to the fact that these wars are immoral, they've woken up to this, you know, that, that this whole system is corrupt. Well, it's our responsibility to create a new world that gives them hope and then brings them to a new place where they can have their own jubilee rebirth of their own soul, where their own soul can be emancipated. Well, this is my cause. This is my mission in life, and I hope that I've, I've touched you in some way, I've, I've done my best here, and again, I'm not telling you you need to do this and listen to me. I'm saying, this is what I'm going to do in my own community. I'm going to recruit more people to issue their own money. We're going to create unrivaled abundance. We're going to create a voluntary society where we finance social programs without coercion and without taxes. We, we can create all this thing. And what's essential to realize, this all sounds like a dream, but like anything, what the mind can conceive, right? We, what, what we can conceive in our brains and what, we believe, what the mind can believe, we can achieve. So all this comes down to is a spiritual revolution where we are willing to conquer the self-doubt and fear in our own hearts because the elite have no power over us that we don't give to them. You know, certainly you see the military and all these edifices 
but the members of the military and the enforcers, once we issue our own money, they'll be glad to accept our money instead of the banker's money, and that's fundamentally how we replace the bank colony with an art colony. And uh, check out my podcast, The Usury Free Jubilee Monetary Reform Podcast. My name is Wayne Walton. Thank you for listening.